The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. In this next demonstration, we're going to show how one can get a laser to oscillate at only one frequency when normally the laser oscillates at, at many frequencies associated with the longitudinal modes. In this case, we're going to look at a, an argon laser, which is over here. And, uh, and we're going to do the single frequency selection by placing an etalon inside, inside the cavity. Now, an etalon is a short fabry porot cavity, which we then will place inside the argon laser cavity, and, and we'll be able to select single frequency. Now we're ready to look at the spectrum of the light from an argon ion laser. Here is here's the argon ion laser, and the output is coming out from the other end of the laser over here. We're going to reflect it by mirrors onto this mirror here, and then reflected light from this mirror will go on to this mirror and is then reflected into this scanning fabric pro interferometer. The free spectral range of this cavity is 15 gigahertz. And here is the detector. And we also put a hood over the path between the cavity and detector to prevent room light from reaching the detector. At the same time, we have a beam splitter here. We're going to reflect a little bit of the light into another scanning fabric pro interferometer over here. This is a longer cavity, has a free spectral range of one and a half gigahertz. Again, the detector for this cavity is, is over here. First, we're going to look at the spectrum of the laser light with the 15 gigahertz free spectral range cavity. So now, let's go over to the scope and look at the, at the output spectrum. Now we can see the output of the 15 gigahertz free spectral range scanning fabric pro cavity on the oscilloscope. What we see here is the free spectral range, which is again 15 gigahertz. That's the separation between these two peaks. And the spectrum of the laser looks like it's about a few gigahertz wide. The reason for this is that the gain curve in an argon laser is pretty broad, is of the order of 10 to 15 gigahertz. And lots of longitudinal modes oscillate. And they compete with each other. And right now, they're blending to give you this big blob of several gigahertz spectrum. Now, for many applications, this broad spectrum is not of much use. For example, in applications using interferometry. For such applications, you need to make the laser oscillate at a single frequency. The popular way of generating single frequency in these big lasers is to use an uh, etalon and put it inside the laser cavity to select out the single frequency. So when we come back, we will we'll put in an etalon inside the laser and observe single frequency output behavior. Now I'm going to put an etalon inside the laser cavity. Here is here's the etalon in a, in a holder. It's a very simple thing. It's a, it's a piece of glass, parallel piece of glass, one centimeter thick, and has a reflectivity of about 35% of about, uh, on, each, on each surface. And it's held in this mount here, so I can then uh, ad adjust it within the laser cavity. So now I'm going to place the, place the etalon inside the laser cavity. There's a little space here between the Brewster window and, and one of the mirrors. So here we are. Here's the etalon in, in, in place. And all I have to do now is adjust, is adjust the, the alignment Uh, 
And here we are now, we get lazing. And uh, we have lazing now. And, uh, and now we're ready then to go and look at the output of the spectrum analyzer with this Etlon in place. Since the Etlon is a solid piece of glass, I cannot change its length very easily, but I can effectively change its length by misaligning it. And in this way then I can get a, a tuning of the, of the Etlon by simply uh, rotating, rotating the Etlon. Now that we have the Etlon inside the cavity, the spectrum is single frequency. And again, the free spectrum range is 15 gigahertz, but the output now is single frequency. And in fact, by adjusting the Etlon, I can, I can tune this frequency across the, the gain curve of the argon laser, which is right now about few gigahertz. So let me do it again. Over here. The, the finesse of the cavity, this 15 gigahertz cavity, is not very high. So what we'll do, we'll switch to the, to the other cavity, the one that has a one and a half gigahertz free spectral range, has a much higher finesse, and we'll be able to see some interesting behavior of this single frequency operation of the laser. On the scope now, we have the output of the one and a half gigahertz fabry perot cavity. As you can see, the spacing between the, the modes here is one and a half gigahertz, and the finesse is pretty high, probably of the order of 300 or so. The, uh, as we can see, the output of the laser is, uh, is single frequency. And uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to misalign the Etlon and, and see what happens. Now what you notice is that because I'm tuning the, the Etlon, I'm also going to be tuning the laser frequency. But the laser frequency is not tuning smoothly, it's tuning in jumps. So let me do it again. Here we are. Jumps or so-called mode hops of the order of the, the free spectral range of the laser cavity, which is of the order of 150 or so megahertz, because the laser cavity is about a meter, meter long. So again, let me show you the hops again. Now let me try to do it with the other knob on the on the Edlon. So it's a less sensitive knob. Now you can see the hops much better. Here we are. There's two hops there. One, two. Here we are. In fact, if we expand the scale and we can make the hops even, even larger. All right, here the scale is expanded. Let me try, try again. Oh, you can see the hops now much more dramatically. So again, it's about one and a half 
150 megahertz or so per, per mode hop. In fact, the intensity is supposed to, as I tune the Edelon, the intensity is supposed to go down and then hop, then go up, down, and then hop. Let's do it one last time. One hop, another hop, another hop, and so on. So, so when we use the Edelon inside the cavity, then we should be expecting these mode hops when the Etlon gets misaligned or its length changes by by small amount. Now when one uses an Etlon like this inside a laser cavity is one thing that one should never do and that is align the Etlon perfectly normal with respect to the axis of the cavity or the laser beam inside the cavity because if you do then you're going to get all sorts of multiple cavities taking place and, uh, and the spectrum goes absolutely haywire. So now I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm going to now align the the fabric, the Edelon to be normal to the laser cavity and we see that the spectrum goes absolutely haywire. And all we have to do is just tilt away and here we get quiet single frequency behavior. Let me go back, let me bring it to normal alignment, and here we see the, the spectrum going absolutely haywire. So again, the no-no with Adlons is not to place them normal to the beam. You just have to tilt them away just a little bit, and and you get nice, quiet, single frequency uh, behavior. 